Hi everyone! Hello! We have some news. Our sailing plans have changed. We're not crossing the canal this year and we have three reasons for that. Okay. What are they? Well, number one, the boat's not ready. Um, we've had problems as per usual. We're going to go to Colombia in a few months or a couple of months and uh, haul it out and do the bottom and repair what we can. Um, there was an El Nino year this year and that sort of um, put a bit of doubt in my mind, especially with our sailing experience on this boat and the boat not being in prime condition to uh, tackle a big journey. El Nino generally brings cyclones more to the eastern Pacific around uh, French Polynesia, so we didn't want to risk that. And also Margarita's seasickness, um, she doesn't seem to be getting over. So I wanna do some week long trips, maybe a bit longer in the Caribbean just to test her out because I think to actually do 28 days uh, in the South Pacific and we realize <laughs> yeah, after a week that Margarita can't take it, then um, it, she wasn't like that on Long Reef. It might be that Margarita is a catamaran girl and well, can't do anything about that now um, so we'll test that out so we've got we've uh, we've got a list uh, of all the things we're uh, going to be doing in Colombia uh, if anyone does have a second-hand sail uh, like a 48 for a 48 foot mass and an 18 foot foot um, like a, Gen a Jenica in a sock for sale let us know because we do need a light wind sail because <laughs> The motor has been giving us problems again. Surprise, surprise. Uh, now, uh, I think the previous owner or the previous previous owner that owned the boat for 33 years, I mean, you'd think if you'd owned the boat for 33 years, you'd do proper repair jobs. I think he's put so much silicon in the tank and it's something I can't see. I think it's up where he sealed the floor to the top of the diesel tank and it's coming out. Because I cleaned it twice now and yet we're still motoring along, coming in a reef, and then the motor Not dies. Guys. And we have to quickly dump the ducky, the dinghy. the dinghy, shove it up the back of the, um, the, the big boat, and someone steers and I just gun it until we get to a place to anchor, and then we've got to blow the tube clear and then prime it all. We're getting get professional Oh yeah, we can, we can do it in 10 minutes. The trouble is 10 minutes, we drift at least 200 meters and we'll be on the roof. So yeah. we've got issues with that. We've got um, lots of repairs. Yeah, we got to replace our toilet. Oh, That's yeah. going to be an issue if we, yeah. we take that to the South Pacific. Because when we we sail and we lean a lot, we don't know why. Uh, it's like the shit comes back up and the, yeah. the lid opens and we then have all on the yeah. floor. And yes, people, I know you need to have two anti-siphoning devices, one on the intake, one on the outtake. We do have We that. do. Essentially, this is one dodgy toilet. It's probably 30 or 40 years and old. And we didn't. It's essentially a bilge pump that I can't get parts for attached to a bowl. So we either get a new toilet or just a new bilge pump, but something that actually works. And yes, I've taken a part and you know that valve, the three-way Thing that closes it's all been checked because i did have some spares from the uh, old owner it just doesn't work properly and yeah. it leaks and it's a disgusting mess so i just go over the side so we've got that we've got a boom winch to um replace we've got um jammers to replace on the side they're broken for some reason we've got running rigging all the running rigging has to be replaced because we didn't do that when we went down we didn't um so we got that to do, it's the bottom paint, if anyone, did I talk about bottom paint yet? No. If anyone knows of a tropical bottom paint, anti-fouling, that works, because the stuff that I bought, it was international, it was the best, it cost me a fortune, it's rubbish, it lasted nine months. I mean, in Australia I know Altec number five gets me a year and a half, possibly almost two years if I'm careful with it, uh, but nothing seems to work well. What we've used hasn't worked. So if anyone's got any words of wisdom there, that'd be great. Um, Basically, we have a huge list. We're going to leave the list here on the screen and on the description. You can look it up, what the repairs and new gear we need to get yeah. before we we cross to yeah. the Pacific. And when we say new gear, it's secondhand gear that's new to the boat. So we're going to be uh, buying quite carefully. Um, so 
Don't be pissed off with us when we're not going to the Pacific this year. There's ample reason why we can't. So we need to get this yeah. Until more then, in working order. So the plan is adding to Colombia around September, October, doing the work there for a month and then get the weather window to go to Cuba so we can test my uh, seasickness That's right. problem. If I overcome it and then stand there for a while, and end of February, around March, we head back to Panama to cross the canal and finally go through the big journey. All right, people, so just letting you know, um, keep watching. Oh. If you like watching our videos, please subscribe and don't for forget to click on the bell so you don't miss on any video, okay? Thank you very much. See you later. Watch the video now. Time to get some fish for our barbecue tonight. We're heading to the lagoon at the front side of the island. In particular, this group of bombies. It's a good spot with lots of white water. I reckon there is a schoolmaster snapper for Margarita here and a dog snapper here for me too. Let's go. loaded up and ready. But Margarita has other ideas. She wants to give this nurse shark a bit of a cuddle. Cuddles are right over my way too, Margarita. Oi, Margarita. Bloody nurse shark. Look how shallow this is. Barely a metre deep and we have a nice oyster cruncher. These are very easy to shoot and taste like shit, so it's best to just have a look. Let's see how close we can get. So close, I touched it with the tip of the gun. Don't worry people, my spear shaft is as blunt as. It wouldn't have hurt it at all. I'm surprised to catch anything at all with this shaft. Check this out. Again, this is very shallow. At every turn, there could be anything. So you just have to be ready. Look what suddenly appears, a beautiful dog snapper. If it wasn't on the bottom being very slow, this magnificent fish would have nicked off by now. I just love looking at them, but there is something wrong with this one I'm afraid. It is too large and we don't want to waste it, so I pretend shoot it a couple of times and then move on. went a little deeper, creeping ever so slowly, and then came face to face with another, even larger dog snapper. Too big for us, so I'll just admire it for a bit and let it go on its way. It's amazing how it can disappear into the smallest of coral holes. Let's see if Margarita has more luck. Margaret has just seen a schoolmaster snapper go into this cave and she's onto it. Check out Margarita's breath hold time in the bottom right hand corner. Look at how slowly she enters the cave. Everything's so unhurried, just perfect. I'm not worried at all. Now this cave has a crack at the back that is letting in light, but it is not big enough to swim out of. This to me is the worst type because it gives you a false sense that you can still swim right through, but of course you can't. This isn't good. Okay, now I'm getting a little worried, although Margarita doesn't appear to be worried at all. There is a bit of a distance to swim backwards, and there isn't much room to turn around, and she can't swim out where she is because it's only a crack. Okay, she takes the shot, and then she tries to get out, and I know from experience that if you panic, you shouldn't ever panic, God knows where she will try to swim out. So I make my move, because to turn around here or swim backwards with long fins is a real yeah. shitter.
So we retrieved the spear, and lo and behold, a fish! A small schoolmaster on the end. Headache forgotten. It's all sweet. This is a long dive, so I've sped it up and shortened it. There is a snapper there, which is difficult to see. I just have a hunch that its home is the big coral outcrop on my left, and not the little coral bommie near it. So I keep creeping slowly to the left, and I wait and see. Bloody great, a small dog snapper just perfect for the two of us. After a good morning hunting, we head to Kokosh Banderos Keys. A canoe was already approaching us with four anxious men inside. So what's happening? So we had this this gunners making us a visit. They asked us if we could send a um, uh, urgency message, but we just ran out a few days ago from our plan so we have signal but we have no money or any plan to send whatsoever uh, they ran out of olive oil and most of the food and they he was asking me to send a message to his daughter asking if she will come soon because they need supplies and we asked here on the right if any of the boats that it's next to us if they have phone signal if they could send a message but no one replies and apparently they've stopped at the, those boats and they don't have it either. So we just contacted on the radio anyone and our friends from Puerto Vida, they replied, they are far away from us. In Even the further away. Further away and in the Hollanders. And they're going to send a message to his daughter asking for help to see if she can bring them food. Because they have, it will be what, a full two days to get them paddling to go there and to come back with supplies will be really really heavy and it's being really strong winds and probably his daughter has a motorboat let's hope everything turns out for the good and soon I'll go and visit the island because they asked me to check their phone because I think it's not very technological and he made them something wrong with the phone so he's he like me. me to just give it a look I'm just gonna send a message now to radio I'd like to know if you come here. We need olive oil with food. We run out. Uh, please reply to my to my cell phone. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna send a message that uh, to Benedito's daughter and to reply back to his number and letting them know uh, they want to know if they're coming and to bring olive oil and food because they're running out of supplies. Is that correct? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you very much for your help. You have a great day. You too. Hope to see you soon. See you back to 72. Maybe at 72. They came to the wrong boat because we're running out of supplies too. That makes us too. Both of us rely on fish. found what the problem was. The SIM card was broken, therefore the phone was not recognizing it.
that look? So I just split it down the um, metal, and now I can get to all the goodies all in here. The brains, the eyes, and all the fat around here. But you have to use essentially something small like this, or basically your tongue. That's probably the best thing. Peter is concentrated on chewing the head while I'm concentrating on getting our dessert then. Banana with coconut cream. My little sugar has some um, dessert. Make her even sweeter. I know it's not possible. But anyway, let's give it a... I better shut up. Uh, I thought we'd discuss what happened in the cave. Well, let's hear it from Margarita. She was the person in the cave for an awfully long time. I know I was a bit worried and apparently she wasn't worried at all. All right. Because I saw um, a sniper and he went down the cave and the first time I went to the cave to see if it saw small or big but I see he had a way up. So I went down and then I just saw him. So I went further and further and further and I think the fish couldn't see me from the angle that I was and I could, I could just see part of his body and then I shot it and I started to come back but my fins was were touching the, the walls, the reef, the coral was getting trapped. It's when Peter pulled me but when we pulled me I bounced my bum into one like the right side of the coral and then I hit my head super strong on the top when he pulled my fin. So I didn't even realize that I actually shot the fish. And then Peter went uh, on the other side. I went he the was easy like, way. He, he could have, he, he got the shaft, but then the gun was trapped. And then we had to go front and back to try to untangle. And well, then we were that's, able... That's beside the point. The issue the, was uh, you being in a cave. Now, I've had a bit of uh, experience, a lot of silly experience about being stuck in caves whilst breath holding, mm. trying to get crayfish and stuff. Um, what Margarita, I probably overreacted. She possibly would have got out fine. But I thought it's better a Margarita with a sore head and a skinned elbow out and alive than a Margarita wholly intact but then drowned in the cave. So what I know is when you go into a cave, and it wasn't that constrictive, this cave, no person understands their spatial environment perfectly. And we always think, oh, I'll just turn around. But you've got really long fins. You've got sticky wetsuit that can grab onto things. Margarita's got beautiful long hair which can wrap around and hair sticks. Trust me. Yeah, it does. So the issue is, the best thing I've found when I've been crayfishing is I got stuck. Well, I try not to get stuck, is I come out exactly the same way. So I go pencil and I keep my fins flat, and I literally push out, and I hopefully come out. And I might have to push out a few times. That way, because I know I've got it in one way, I know I can get out. But as soon as you start to turn, as I have done in the past, I've got stuck, and I've had to damage myself, coral, and weight belts, and wetsuits, just to get out of there, and have had a sore head. So, I didn't want that happening, because I could see she was starting to turn around, and I saw that hair and I just overreacted, perhaps. And you might have got out. But she's got a bit of a bump on her head. Thankfully, it's not too much of a bump to uh, knock her out of stop loving me. 